take the Wrigley Field build day part 10. By the end of this video, I will have all the upper deck seats and the upper deck roof installed. While you're watching this, I'm going to talk about all of the types of events that Wrigley Field has been used for other than Cubs games. And it's a very, very long list, so let's get right to it. The second most common use for Wrigley Field would be football, mainly because the Chicago Bears played at Wrigley from 1921 to 1970. I touched on this a little bit in my last video, but let's go into a little more detail. The reason the Bears played at Wrigley Field is because Bears owner George Hallis didn't want to play at the cavernous Soldier Field, which sat over 100,000 people and was way too big for what the Bears could draw back then. The Bears were, however, forced to move to Soldier Field in 1970 since part of the deal with the AFL-NFL merger was that all teams had to play in stadiums that seated over 50,000. After 1970, Wrigley Field wouldn't host football again until 2010 when that Northwestern Illinois game that all went in one direction like I talked about in last video happened. In order to allow Northwestern to play more games at Wrigley Field like they plan to do starting next year in 2020, Wrigley Field has been modified so that the third base dugout and a few of the first rows can be taken out and this field could be slid a little bit further west giving it enough room to get away from that right field fence. As you may or may not know, Wrigley Field didn't have lights until the 80s. However, when the Cubs finally installed lights, that wasn't the first night sporting event played at Wrigley Field. The first nighttime sporting event at Wrigley Field was the Harlem Globetrotters, who brought in portable lights so they could play a night game at the friendly confines. Fun fact that kind of wraps this all together, the Harlem Globetrotters were actually founded in Chicago. When the Trotters started out in the 1920s, they were the Chicago Globe Trotters. They mostly toured around Illinois and Iowa. After two years, they chose to start claiming they were from Harlem as being the out-of-town team from the big city of New York had more mystique to it. The Trotters played basketball all around the globe for 42 years until they actually played a game in Harlem for the first time in 1968. The next common sporting event at Wrigley Field would be soccer. Wrigley began hosting soccer games in the 1970s when the Chicago Sting called the Friendly Confines home. The Stings were a member of the NASL, which folded in 1985 and was eventually replaced by the MLS. Even though the NASL and Chicago Sting folded, Wrigley has hosted many soccer games since then, perhaps making soccer the second most frequently played sport at Wrigley in the last couple decades. Another sport that's been played at Wrigley? Hockey. On New Year's Day 2009, the Blackhawks hosted the Red Wings in a hockey game at Wrigley. This means Wrigley has hosted professional baseball, professional football, pro basketball, pro hockey, and pro soccer. What other venue can lay claim to hosting all five of America's biggest professional sports? I can't think of any, but if you can, please drop it in the comments and let me know, especially if there's an outdoor venue. I don't think there are, but my wife will tell you I am wrong quite frequently. So maybe you're going to be the one that proves me wrong. More events Wrigley has been used for. Boxing, pro wrestling, rodeos, the circus. In fact, the circus was so common at Wrigley Field that that gate you see in right field is known as the elephant gate because it was made big enough for elephants to fit through. When I build the elephant gate, I'm going to make sure to put elephants in the corridor. Drawings of elephants, not real elephants. I don't think they fit in the corridor as an ode to that being called the Elephant Gate. Wrigley Field has been used as a theater, as a host of religious events such as revivals. Perhaps it would have been easier to make a video about the types of events that haven't been hosted at Wrigley Field, and I'm not even done. Let's talk about movies at Wrigley Field because there is an extensive list of movies that have been filmed at Wrigley, but obviously the most iconic is Rookie of the Year. A little dark horse you might not have heard of would be A League of Their Own, which was also filmed at Wrigley Field. I got two more types of events that Wrigley Field hosts. In 2005, Wrigley started hosting concerts. Not without controversy, there's a lot of grumpy neighbors in Wrigleyville that have a hard time falling asleep to Jimmy Buffett. Which, come on, if you buy a house or rent an apartment close to Wrigley Field, you gotta know big loud crowds are what comes with the property. That's like buying beachfront property and not liking the sound of waves. The most notable musicians who have played Wrigley Field include the likes of Elton John, Billy Joel, Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen, Pearl Jam, Foo Fighters, ACDC, and Def Leppard. 
I saved my favorite event for last because it's probably the most unusual. Would you believe if I told you that Wrigley Field once hosted ski jumping? That's right, I'm not lying to you. Here's pictures to prove it. They set up scaffolding that ran from the upper deck down to the infield, and the ski jumpers landed around second base. Although this is crazy, it isn't the only time you could see it. It happened twice at Soldier Field. Once coming down in the end zone, one time they went over the iconic columns. But even crazier than ski jumping having at Chicago at Wrigley Field and Soldier Field, there was ski jumping events just like this at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Snow sports in Southern California. Who would have thunk it, right? Well, that's all I got for you. Hit my logo there to subscribe. And I will catch you on the flippity flip.